So you've just started a new football manager 2023 save, or you've gone from your current club that you've spent a year or two to a brand new club, a club's coming for you, you fancy having a go at them, but you don't know anything about the players or anything like that, then this is the video for you. This is how we make a football manager 2023 tactic when you don't have any knowledge of the club whatsoever. For the purpose of this video, this tutorial, we are going to be using Plymouth because I don't know any of the Plymouth players. I was going to use some of the Premier League teams like Newcastle, Liverpool, Man City, etc. But you guys know the players. So the benefit of this video is, is for people like myself that play football manager in the the lower leagues or at clubs that you don't necessarily know the names of the players and the roles and how good the certain player is, then this video is for you. So once you've gone through all the welcome stuff and information about your club, etc, etc, you get to your inbox, the first screen on your inbox, and you will see that there is a tactical direction required email. This is important because the longer you have a tactic in place, the easier and the better that the players will adjust to it before the start of the season. You use pre-season to tweak your tactic. Use your pre-season to get players familiar with roles, players familiar with the formation, the mentality, everything like that. And we are going to go through it as an, a step-by-step -step on how I build a tactic. There is a three or four different ways that I use how to build tactics in FM that are available to us straight off the bat. Um, some of you Football Manager 23 veterans or some of you Football Manager uh, guys out there that played the game for years, then this video, unfortunately, isn't for you guys. But if you do find this video helpful, please leave a like. Remember to comment in the comment section below to let me know if it has helped you guys out as well. That will be fantastic. There is also a few little tips and tricks that I tend to, I tend to use to narrow our search down and stuff. We'll go through all of those in this video. So once you've got your emails and stuff, what I tend to do is from this email screen here, we'll just accept this, we go to our tactics tab to bring us up a fresh new tactical style. There is, there's a lot of things to a tactic. There is the style, there is the mentality, there is player roles, the formation, etc, etc. Now, me as a, as a, as a footballer, fanatic, as, as much as I love football and play football, I already have in my head know what style of tactic I want to play. However, that style of tactic may not be suitable for the club that you are managing in Football Manager 2023. Yes, you can try and implement it into the game and to the players that are already at the club. You can sell players, you can buy players to suit your tactic as well. But for this one, um, we're going to be doing it for Plymouth. So we're going to go through it. I've not looked at the squad or anything like that. I don't know what who's the best player is, who's, who's the best attacker is, defender, etc. I know none of that. When you get onto the tactic screen, Football Manager will automatically recommend three tactics, three tactical styles, I should say, that will be recommended for Plymouth. The ones with the thumbs up, a grey gun press, a vertical tiki tacker, and a directional direct counter attack. A brief description of what a grey gun press is is uh, instantly wins the back wins back possession and you play a high intensity running. Uh, vertical tiki taka, you dominate possession, relentless pressing, emphasize on moving the ball, and then the direct counter attack is soak up the pressure and direct and in direct and structured. Sorry, my eyesight is really bad at the moment. I'm off of my eyes testing soon, so yeah, hopefully that fixes it. Um so yeah, we're gonna do that. What we're gonna what you can do as well is you can create your own style at the bottom of the, of the screen here, which not a lot of people's. This tab seems to go under the radar a little bit because I've seen people that will click on this and then they'll all go through it. They'll get rid of everything that's in there, etc., etc. These are these tactical styles are kind of like presets and stuff. So if we use a Gregan press, for instance, you can see that it gives us the mentality positive in possession, passing to space, play out of defence, a higher tempo. In transition is take shorter kicks, distribute to the centre backs, counter, counter press. And then out of possession is high defensive lines. It gives you literally, if I go to it, choose formation, we'll just choose that one because it's got the thumbs up and boom, you've already got a tactic already made from the preset. Now you can tweak these and stuff like that, but we're going to go in and we're going to uh, create a new tactic. Again, it takes you back to this screen and we're going to create our own style. The first thing you want you to be looking at is... I like to play four at the back. I'm not a person that likes to play three at the back of Football Manager. I have tried it. It sometimes works out well for me, sometimes it doesn't. But we're going to be implementing a formation. And for the purpose of the video, I'm going to go with... A f I don't want to do that one because there is so many... Um, there are so many. That is literally the the base stone of football manager. Is this midfield? Is this formation? It's a four-one-two-two-one. 
It's basically a 4 3 3. It gets heavily used on Football Manager. I heavily use it. I think it's great. But if you go here as well, you can do this. You can have 4 2 2 2 with four defender formations. These are the recommended ones. The five ones is 5 2 3 1. So you can see before you actually implement it, but you can also tweak it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it on a 4 4 2 for now. And what also I tend to do is, is the player roles and stuff. If we want to play different formations, so maybe we want to play that. We can do if you want to play this. So you just li literally just moving the players up into position. Is it going to work for me? Thank you. Moving the players up into position and stuff like so. So it's however you want to play that. To me, is a little bit too attacking. So we'll drop these down. Um, what we'll do is I'm going to go for a funky formation this time. We're going to play this. I think. Why is it not working? Come on, game. Thank you. We're going to play this. For now, now the roles are already set. What I mean by roles is you see you here at your back line, it says FB, CD, CD, and FB. So basically, that is how they're going to perform in goal. That's the role that they're going to play in the formation. So this guy is going to be a full back and he's going to be on support. Support basically means he will join the tack every now and then. You can put it automatic, it's entirely whatever you guys want to do. If you want a description of what all these mean, you can read them. Just spend a couple of times, just read a couple of minutes, just reading it and stuff. But I want to do a full back. Both of our left and right back, we want it to be on full back for the purpose of this video. Then centre back, we can look at the player roles and stuff like that. It again, it depends. We've got no nonsense centre back, a defender that will just look to just clear these lines, get it to safety. Ball playing defender, he wants to play the ball out from the back. Again, I'm not going to do any of these. I'm just going to leave it on default for now, just because of the purpose of the video. So, on the left-hand side, then, you want, you've got your, your tactical style, and this is how you want to play. So, mentality is how you're going to play as a team. What do you want to do? Do you want to defend? Do you want to attack? Do you want to play cautious? Do uh, you want to soak up pressure? Do you want to hit him on the counter-attack? Do you want to be positive? Do you want to play attacking? Again, it's entirely up to you. However you situate the video, um, however you situate your tactical style, I should say, is how you want to do. I'm going to go attacking because I'm attacking master. Actually, I'm going to drop him down there. I'm going to, well, this, this, I actually might use this tactic. It's shaping up to be quite a decent tactic. So in possession, then, we have three screens to look at, three lanes. Uh, we've got attacking width, approach play, and in, then in the final third. So attacking width, you can see how wide, when we have possession, how narrow or wide we want to play. I normally probably put it on fairly wide i do tweak this during games and stuff or before games um just because if you play wide you can see there's a lot of space in the midfield channels there so i feel like this is probably going to be better suited now the approach play we can click pass to space so they're going to look to pass it into space but i don't want to do that for this video we're going to go focus down the left focus down the right or we can play through the middle it's entirely up to you you can underlap and overlap ideally you want this here your style of play to inter interlink with your formation so for this one it's a, it's a tricky one because we've got to we've got two narrow players here and we've got two wingers and there's full backs we can focus play through the middle and we can get our right back and left back to overlap as well if you notice when we do click on focus through the middle you'll notice that focus down the right and down the left are blocked uh, 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 read out basically that basically means you, you you can't use that it's one or the other if you want to do that you can see how it affects the style passing directions is the next one then again how do you want to play do you want to be a long ball merchant do you want to be direct do you want to keep the ball do you want to pass short again it's entirely up to you your personal preference for this video we are going to just slide this slider down to shorter Tempo, that's how fast you are with the ball, how fast you look to hit the, the, the team on the break, how fast you want to pass the, the ball around. Higher tempo might catch your opponent out, so we'll do that. Time wasting, we never really we never really do that unless it's the 80th minute, we wouldn't have looked. But again, you can access this screen inside the match engine on Football Manager. The final third, then mixed crosses, floaty crosses, whip crosses or low crosses. A selection of four, I like to leave it on mix. It just suits me. It's just what I like, mixing it up, confusing the defence as well. In terms of dribbling, you can dribble less, you can run at defence. Again, the only one selection out of this that you can allow to select. If you want to dribble more, you can do. If you want to dribble less, you can do. Again, it's personal preference. Creative freedom then, be more expressive. So what that means is be more expressive is they will slightly come away from the roles that they're doing to try and find holes and pockets of space. In that sort of role. So if we had this guy here where my mouse cursor is, a deep line forward, 
he will look to come into here to look for play the ball if he's going to be more expressive and stuff and it can confuse your your opponents as well but that's how we want to do when we're in possession of the ball that's how we want our style to play on to the next tab then in transition this is how we're going to fare when we have lost the ball when we've won the ball back and when our goalkeeper is in possession with it as well the counter press counter press is literally if you do guys don't know it's used in, in football terminology now heavily the counter press is once you've lost that ball you want to win that ball back as quickly as possible if you hold your mouse cursor over the counter press the tab it can gives you a, a brief description of what you want it to do the regroup again you lose possession you look to get your players back into position into defensive mindset to make it harder for you guys to break down so those are the two i'm going to use regroup it's very rare i use this but i'm going to for the purpose of this video I'm going to use regroup. When the possession has been won, counter or do we hold our shape? Again, it does exactly what it says on the team. Counter would, uh, will ask the players to immediately go on the attack and seek an advantage of the opportunities left by the dispossessed opponents or hold our shape. We look to hold our shape before we then we build an attack. I'm going to go with the counter. So when our goalkeeper is in possession of the ball, we can do a number of things which is nice it's a quite a nice add-on is this is it was this in fm22 i'm not sure i think they've added a bit more to it so if you want to distribute to your center backs you can if you want to distribute to your back line you can mixing it up or if you want to distribute to the flanks or distribute to playmaker target man again it all depends these roles here all depend on what roles you have got in your formation also you can do distribute quickly or you can slow the pace down a little bit uh, also as well we've got this drop down box here you can if you don't want to distribute to an area and you feel like you want to distribute to a certain player you can click that let's just put a player in here very quickly let's go with who and i know he's in the cdm position but let's go back on to this and if you go to this distribute to opponent number four which is Hugh, and we can distribute it to him all the time I personally don't like that. I personally like to keep our opponents guessing and stuff. We'll distribute it to the flanks for this. And then we've got also distribution type as well from the goalkeeper. Roll it out, we'll throw it out, take short kicks uh, and take long kicks. Again, it's your personal preference to how you want to play. So that is something that we are going to do there. We're going to look to throw it long because we're going to distribute it to our flanks. On to out of possession then, there's not much, there's a few options here, there's not a massive amount, I would like them to do a little bit more with it going forward in Football Manager because tactics now are getting huge, a tactical approach from managers, we've seen it in games, we've seen it on Football Manager and stuff um, and they've added a few things to it this year also as well. So our defensive shape then, this is how we want to look to line up, this is the pitch, you've got our formation, this is the formation that we selected to start off with and we have got the line of engagement and we've also got a line here which basically is our defensive line. Pretty easy. If we move this up, we can go much higher, we can go higher, we can go standard, lower, and much more lower. So we've got a much more lower look at that. We're literally sat back on our own 18-yard box. That's when we get Man City in the cup away, and that's how we want to play. And we can go down here and low block. But what I tend to do is I like to use a bit of a mid-block and my defensive line. Again, it's a tricky one. I tweak this. We can go standard or we can go higher. I'm going to leave it on higher. The reason being is you see that the area that the, the two lines is, so this area is here and the pitch, This literally this rectangle here, is I want to make this area as most compact as possible. Why? It's because we are going to want to win the ball back as quickly as possible and stuff. We don't want to allow our opponents to have that space, that time on the ball, etc. So the less space there is. But if I did this, you can see how those spaces... So there's a lot of time on the ball for the player. It's a time for players to pick the pass. They can run into it. They're creating pressure. I, I'm just not a massive fan of it, to be perfectly honest. So we, I like to do a mid-block with a high defensive line. Like I said, I do tweak it. I do put it on standard sometimes. But I do tend to leave it on this at the moment. If I'm getting caught out in three or four games and there's a ball over the top and our centre-halves aren't looking to get in, then that's how we want to want to be looking. So we look to... That's yeah, much higher. If you're playing a ball over the top, I should say. Sorry. Playing the ball over the top, we're getting caught out by it. I just drop our defensive line to standard. And then I might even go down to a low block instead. Again, it just depends on what you want to do. You can see how the mid-block and low block, it moves your defensive line back slightly. But it just makes that midfield more compact. Again, it's up to you guys however you want to do that. So another option we've got is trigger press. It's again, if it's if it's pushed, if it's put on slightly more often, and the trigger press will be set accordingly to the team's mentality. So the team's mentality is basically attacking. So if you leave it on there, the game and the AI will automatically do it for you. You can override this, you can go much more, and you can go much more often. It's again, it's up to you. 
if you don't want to be playing the pressing style of game, you can push it down to slightly left often, less often. So they will still press, but it won't be. They might press in one in every 10 opportunity there. And then if you put this much more or less, they might press once in every 15 or 20 times. Whatever. Again, it's entirely up to you. I'm just going to leave it on there for now as well. Also as well, we can do prevent short goalkeeper distribution, which basically instructs the forwards to go and push on to the centre backs or the the left and right back. This, if I click, if I tick this, prevent short kick distribution. If we go over to this here, you know, like how we've got it to distribute to flanks, but our opponents might have it, have that on it. So then our attackers will look to try and stop our goalkeeper from pushing it out to the full backs or the centre backs. So that's what that basically means there. Pretty simple. Again, these attacking players will go up here and it will stop. And then it'll, it kind of forces it, the goalkeeper in to kicking the ball long. And the good thing about kicking the ball long is you have a 50-50 chance of winning the ball. If they are if they are passing it to the full backs or centre backs, whatever, then they're in possession of the ball. So your likelihood of winning the ball back compared to the goalkeeper kicking it long are very slim. So I tend to leave... Prevent short, kick, uh, prevent short goalkeeper distribution for that reason. Tackling, stay on feet, get stuck in, it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, get stuck in, you are going to get some yellow cards with this, um, increased risk of fouls and disciplinary action. I sometimes put it on, I sometimes take it off again, it's all personal preference. Defensive line, step up more, does what it says on the tin. Drop off more, again, does what it says on the tin. Pressing trap, so you can trap them inside when you're counter-pressing, or you can trap them outside while doing the regroup, so I'm just going to leave that off of there. Like, everything tries in, in interlinks with everything and stuff. Like I say, do tweak it over pre-season, the first 10 games, whatever. It's entirely up to you. So that is basically what we're going to do with there. That, that is how we're going to look to line up and stuff. We are going to click on done on there, and this is it. There's a lot of player roles and stuff like that. I don't want to go through all of that just yet, but what I tend to do now is we've got our tactical style how we want to play football our mentality there's another thing that we need to do if we click on this here and we go set primary trained tactic so if you're like me and you get a bit lazy on football manager and you allow your staff to just to do the, the do the training for you so if it's all set up here you can see their primary train tactic is the tactic that we are using there there's other tactics as well you can train up as well so i tend to have like th you can have three slots in here um but i tend to just have one tactic trained as a primary tactic and then and as coaches, the staff would automatically do that for us. Now then, the interesting bit is roles and picking your players. Now, there is a number of ways of picking players. I, personally, like to use ability and potential in a player. I'm not going to be looking... The first thing is, like, if we look at... Use this guy here, one and a half star. We'll use Adam, per, Adam, Adam Parks, right? We'll look at him. He's a goalkeeper. There's attributes to look out for on a goalkeeper. Again, it's pretty straightforward. You want to look at his handling, his kicking, his one-on-ones. Basically, the game highlights everything for you, what you need. Like, goalkeeper's probably a bad example. Let's go to James Wilson then. He is a right-back in this at the minute, and you can see how FM highlights certain roles and stuff for each, each one it is. So if he's right-back, it highlights... Aggression, anticipation, bravery, concentration, heading, marking, tackling, and also this as well. Tackling, marking, heading, all those mental... It basically highlights his his uh, technical, mental, and physical attributes, which is suited best for that role, so you can get a better idea of it. If we've got a centre-half in Wilson, who's got tackling of 13, which is pretty standard, pretty good, um, what you would want in a centre-back, and we have a player that is... Let's use... Please show me a good example. This guy who's only got tackling seven. I know who I'm picking straight off the bat. Wilson, all day long. So I tend to look at stuff like that as well. It just again, it's however you want however you want to do it in picking your teams. Ability wise, again, it's entirely up to you. If, if you're not use if you're doing a say that you don't use attributes, um you can use your coach reports, your scout reports, whatever, your potential, etc. in there. Also as well, if we go back to the tactic screen. If we go to goalkeeper, we click on this tab here and we can see that Mike Cooper, role ability, is our best keeper. So we will probably select him there. He does have three and a half star as a goalkeeper. Now then, this is where it gets interesting. Joel Edwards, so again, you look at let's look at Joel Edwards as an example, right? Looks very good. Good stamina, good fitness, good balance. Again, you can see his role is wing back. 
So you're looking at this here and you're thinking, right, perfect. To get the best out of your players, I am actually going to put him in as a wing back. Right now, it's currently set to full back. But if we click on this here, we can change his role to wing back, defend, support. Again, it's entirely up to you what you want to do and how you want to engage that. Full back, defend, it's up to you however you want to do it. Make sure, you see how it's changed to three star? Now we've put him on full back and defend. But if we go to full back and support, we gain half a star for his role ability. So we're going to leave him on a full back and, and attack. I actually know, we'll, we'll, we'll put him on as a wing back. We'll go wing back and um, we'll go wing back and support. So that's how I do it. I tend to do it from this screen here and use the player's ability and whatnot and stuff to see how we cope with what's the best role for the player. So let's look at this attacking midfield. All right, let's click it. It gives you, if you click the arrow, it gives you a selected player, whatever you want to play in. So let's use Finn as a, is as, right? He is four star on there. If you look at his role, click on his role, you can see he's as good as an, an advanced playmaker, a tranquilizer, I can't pronounce that, and a shadow striker. Again, it's entirely up to you. Have him, on, <coughs> have him on attack midfield and support. Again, let's go to the other one. Again, let's go to David Mayer this time. Just be wary when you're selecting multiple positions that you don't take a player out. Because if you look at this, you can see that Finn, Finn As, who's already in the starting 11, does come up as a suggestion, but it does let you know if he's being picked or not in that column there. So it makes it so much easier for you, however you want to do it. So Daniel Mayer, we're going to look at him. Um, we're going to go with attack and support attack. So I know straight away that we're going to do... Uh, can I not actually... I can put him as a shadow striker if I really wanted. We can put him as a shadow striker. Again, we can tweak this. It depends on, on your personal preference. Wingers. Again, let's use uh, Moomba as an example here. He's a freestyle winger. But if we go to this, it's probably his best role. There is a wide midfielder he's not particularly great at. So each position has a number of roles that you want to use. And to get the best out of your players, use the role ability stars, which are available clear as day the higher the role ability the better the player is going to perform in that ability also what you can do is go to quick pick let your assistant do it for you um and stuff the problem with that is danny mayer where is he let's where, where is he playing so he's playing left midfielder he is currently on two star as a winger as a support perfect example there we go inverted winger and support he now is a three star in the role ability. Make sure that you, I tend to try and leave my roles two and a half star, three star. Two and a half star I'm not particularly happy with, but I will, if I have to use it, I will. If not, I would want him at minimum of three star going forward. So this defender here in, I, I'm not gonna pronounce his name because you guys know I'm, I am, I'm like with pronunciation. Again, another example is a central defender at two and a half star and on defend two and a half star. But if we go to a ball playing defender and we can have defend and stopper or cover, we can do that. So now he's gained a half a star, so he's gonna be more comfortable in the role that you're asking him to play. Make sure when you sign players that you have this role available to you. Uh, the best role available to the player so it's, it's, it's interlinked the player, what he's best suited at is his position. So obviously, like Mwamba is a left midfielder, but you can see the skin I've got on, it tells me what he is comfortable playing with. So those are the three options that I'm com that he's going to be comfortable uh, playing with. Fairly strong, wing back, again, you can change it in here as well, but I tend to do it on the tactic screen because everything's done here. Um, let's have a look at those tacker again i just go through i just spend a couple of minutes just going through each position each role to see if we are getting the best from our defenders again no nonsense fullback again if you didn't want to play no nonsense fullback there and you wanted to go for a wing back then maybe that's then your time to dip your toes into transfer market to look for a wing back and then support if you want it to match up with our right back again it's your save if it's your roles it's your tactic Buy the players you need for each role. There's no point having a player. Let's use... I can't, I, I, let, okay, let me just swap these two about, for example, right? There's no point using, just for purpose, the video's sake. Let's just say Morgan Whitaker can play DM, right? That is his role there. Let's just say he can play there and he's only got two star. And you think, actually, that's an important role because it's going to protect our back four. And I want to play a DM throughout all of my tactics that I create. Then I need to go and sign a player for that position. Also, as well, let's just go and go to scouting. Let's use uh, hopefully these guys. Yeah, it's perfect. So let's use Harrison Burrows as an example. How we would do that? So mentioned this is a good example as well. Mentioned we talked about 
the rows and stuff. So our left back is currently set onto a no nonsense full back for the time being. But we can see here complete wing back or a wing back in attack. He's got his roles there available to him, to you, right off the bat. Sometimes you will have to scout the player. Scouting for a week, maybe two. Again, it's entirely up to you. Get as much information on a player as possible before you do sign him. But again, perfect example is you can interlink with your tactic. Is there another one here? Uh, goalkeeper, look, at, he's actually pretty decent. No, it's, it's two and a half star current ability. But again, the goalkeeper position's... It's hard to do because there's two roles for a goalkeeper. There's a goalkeeper and a sweeper-keeper. So again, it's your tactic. Buy the players that you want to fit into your tactic. If you don't like playing a no-nonsense fullback, then don't play a no-nonsense fullback. If you want to play a fullback, go into the market and buy a fullback that, that suits the role best for you. It's entirely up to you, whatever you want to do. I think I've explained everything. It is basic. I know it's a video that I wanted to do. It's January when I'm recording this. I wanted it to go on the channel because the the Stevenage series that we're doing is doing fantastically well and I just wanted some more content, a football manager going up and stuff. What I will do is I will upload this to the Steam Workshop as well once I've got everything uh, sorted out. I will save it. The other thing as well I've missed out, you want to save your tactic, click save um, and we'll just do, name it whatever you want. So I will call it the SJH way. Right, this isn't the way, this isn't the way it is. You can put a description in there, whatever you like. It's entirely up to you, and you can save it or you can publish it to Steam. I'm gonna I'm gonna publish it to Steam right now, so it's available straight off. If I, if you guys want to try and use it, we will do. I might use it in my Stevenage save going forward. Um, so you can see there, it's changed it the SJH way. It's not my way. It's just one thing that I wanted to wanted to call this call the video. But again, three things I remember is roles. A attacking mentality and how you want to play when you've won the ball or when you have lost the ball. It's entirely up to you, whatever you want to do. That is the best way of of creating a tactic from scratch. I hope I've not gone into too much detail. I hope I've explained things enough. Um, and if it's simply not working, change your formation. That's a good thing about Football Manager is you can tweak everything. If you feel like this formation is not working, you feel like you need to bring him into here, maybe, or, or go with something like this, maybe, again, it's entirely up to you. It's your it's your tactic, it's your save, it's your team. Buy the players if you've got the money, or if you haven't got the money, use the drop-down box. Like I said, when you click on a player's name here, use, that's not a good example, use, use this, the position, no, no, not the position, the role ability, sorry. Use the role ability to get the best out of your players for the time being until you can be able to sign players and and sell you can sign players sell players whatever you want to do until you get the funds to be able to buy players in that chosen role that's what i tend to do it's worked very well for me so far it's worked look at the stevenage save for instance in january we managed to pick up some wins and that's because i managed to sign my own players that i wanted for that role but thank you very much for watching, boys. If you have enjoyed this video and you want to see more of these videos, then let me know in the comment section below. It would be greatly appreciated. And I'll catch you on another video very, very soon. Goodbye.